everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and a little bit crazy you might say. So for those of you who don't know, I play the oboe as well as try and make art and I had quite a few dead oboe reeds lying around. This is what you look like, you stick it in the end of the instrument and it makes a sound when you blow for it. A bit of focus. There we go, it's two pieces of cane kind of fused together with a bit of wire and then put on the end of a cork and I thought rather than just throw them in the bin and waste them why don't I try and paint with them so I've got kind of a collection of kind of cheap acrylic paints like some from Reeves and some from De La Rowney that I've just kind of collected over the years and paint with because I don't want to try this with expensive paints and I have a piece of five by seven um, canvas board five inches by seven and I'm just going to try and paint with them and see what happens. This could go horribly wrong, but let's see anyway. So let's get on with it. So before I began painting, I lightly sketched the outline with a mechanical pencil onto the canvas board, just so that I could map out where the background was and where the duck was. That's all I used. I even used the oboe reeds to mix the paint, as you can see here. So I lay down a background of a mixture of greens, blues and browns and a bit of yellow as I'm painting a duck in some grass or even reeds. Pun definitely intended. So once I had laid down the background of the reeds, I went in and laid the groundwork for the duck. I used a mixture of very light brown, yellow and white here. And I found it quite easy to do the texture of the duck with these reeds because the duck looks really, really fluffy with the way that I was putting the paint down. I was kind of like dabbing it rather than kind of swirling it like you would a brush maybe. And for the beak, I used a mixture of brown and blue and that's the same for the eyes and white I added to the beak as well to kind of give it a more gray look rather than use a gray paint. And I think this worked really well. And I really like the texture that the reeds give and I might even use these again when I'm painting and yeah it was really fun but I just had to remember to keep wiping the reed of excess paint and making sure there was no paint clogged in the middle of it because there's a gap between the two reeds which is hungry for paint. So you might be wondering why did I decide to paint a duck for this piece? Well that's because there is this joke within orchestras that the oboe does sound like a duck sometimes. And this can especially be true when you're first starting out. Because the oboe is quite a difficult instrument to begin with and it's difficult to get a sound out of it. And I definitely sounded like a duck when I first started out. Probably for a few years and maybe I still do sometimes. And there's even a famous piece of music by a famous composer called Prokofiev called Peter and the Wolf and in this piece the oboe is mimicking the duck noises. So cheers for that coffee. So what I found the most difficult about this piece was painting the bits of grass or the reeds. And I thought it would be easier than it actually was because of the kind of straight edge on the oboe reeds. I thought it'd be quite easy to create kind of straight, thin grass blades, but this wasn't the case. I think it's partly because I did another layer on top when I attempted this and due to the texture underneath, it didn't really go so well, but it's fine. I still like it. It doesn't ruin the piece or anything, I don't think. But yeah, maybe next time I'll try a different technique. So let's have one or two facts about the oboe, because why not? Let's do a little bit of learning while we watch a speed paint of a duck. Really am pulling out all the stops here on this channel. So the oboe is descended from an instrument known as the shawm, which dates back from around 2800 BC, apparently, from the Middle East. And the oboe was introduced 
to French courts in the mid 17th century and became part of classical orchestras in the beginning of the 18th century. So it's been around a long time. And a bit more about the reeds. So the reed is a double reed, which means there are two pieces of flattened blades that produce sound through the vibrations of the blades against each other. So like I mentioned earlier, and serious oboe players make their own reeds. But I'm not a serious oboe player, so I don't make my own reeds. So the reeds that I'm using in this painting come from a variety of reed makers. I know that one comes from a guy called Nick Wingfield, and another comes from a guy called Andrew Knight, and he has played with the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra and he makes amazing oboe reeds. And if you're watching this, I'm very sorry for what I'm doing with your reeds right now, but I promise, I promise that they have had a good life and I have played a lot of music with them and I'm continuing to use your reeds. So thank you and sorry. So yeah, I really enjoyed painting this little duckling. I think it turned out really cute and fluffy and the texture, I'm really impressed with the texture you can get with these oboe reeds. And I'm definitely going to keep my old oboe reeds from now on. Once I practice really, really hard on them and they're no longer fit to play, they're definitely going to be turned into paintbrushes. So I hope you enjoyed this rather unusual video and learning about the oboe if you didn't know what it was already. And I will see you next Thursday. Bye for now. <laughs>